beauty, the miracle that transforms dull green shrubs at London's Kew Gardens into a sudden riot of rhododendron loveliness at the unpredictable moment that wayward nature dictates. Here, they're defeating nature. With ice and shade, they're holding flowers back from their natural bloom time, just as in hothouses, they're forcing others on ahead of their season. They're defeating nature in all sorts of ways. One way they defeat nature starts by giving bees a bath. It's part of the pollination procedure the big seed firms adopt to improve on nature in the color, shape, and size of the flowers they grow. Bees carry the pollen that fertilizes flowers. So here they wash the bees so that they don't carry unknown pollen to the pedigree flowers they're developing as pure strains, isolated under muslin. This is the way the seed growers ensure that they won't produce a hybrid or mongrel seed from some particular flower when they want to avoid accidental cross-pollination, although often producing hybrids is the very thing they're aiming at. Hence, this partnership between seed grower and a honeycomb cluster of ordinary unwashed bees. The object here is to let these bees fertilize a greenhouse full of cinerarias. Some new crossbred strain could come out of it. To produce what experts call an F1 hybrid, you can remove the anthers from a flower and then transfer the pollen to the female seed. It's deft, delicate work, defeating nature to produce the wonder of a modern, man-made garden. This is one of the seed grower's techniques that has produced the extravagant range of petunia colors that gardeners now know. But you can cross-pollinate flowers by using a rabbit's foot to dust the fertilizing pollen on. Pollination methods are endless. Sometimes the simplest way of doing it is best. The seed itself is the all important commodity here at this Reading establishment because these are the seedsmen whose aim it is to provide gardeners with the biggest, loveliest, newest varieties of blooms in existence. The seed being sifted here is calceolaria seed, and so fine it is that it costs hundreds of pounds an ounce. It's difficult to imagine, but there is over 700 pounds worth of it on this single tray. The auto seed counter measures out 100 seeds on to wet filters to test their germinating power. This is the rigorous test that regular samples have to face. After the correct sprouting period, a percentage count is made to check that the seeds are up to standard. Testing is continuous. The development of ever new varieties is never ending, but once a year, there's a special frenzy of activity here and at all the big flower producing firms. The rush to get ready for the great annual event in the gardening world, the Chelsea Flower Show. Here's where they bring flowers on fast or hold them back, defeating nature to produce a four day miracle display. Owen Sutton, director of this firm his great-great-grandfather founded, is selecting the all-important exhibition blooms for the great occasion. They must be superb, breathtaking, unique. Chelsea, and there's three weeks' work each year turning wasteland into a magical garden, though few of the quarter-million visitors realize what a grand transformation scene takes place. They never guess that the waterfalls are built each year to exist for less than a week. Ever since 1913, with war gaps, there's been this hectic scene in the gardens of Chelsea Hospital as 300-odd exhibitors prepare to put the glories of gardening splendor on show to enthusiasts from all over the world. Come behind the scenes and watch the color and beauty of the flower show that will last a whole year in memory, take its exciting shape.
Gardeners a tented area of three and a half acres, as well as the outdoor gardens, all designed for a four-day life. Four days which are vital to the reputation of every one of the expert exhibitors who create this astonishing show. You begin to understand that seedsman's frenzy to bring all those flowers to the peak of perfection for these few testing days, and the effort to breed hybrids that have that dazzling difference. Working against the clock now, arranging exhibition flowers that are even brighter and bigger than the pictures on the packets of seed. You can't bring them in too early or they'd wilt away, so there's more last-minute frenzy. Keep your fingers crossed and hold your breath. take the canvas covering off the roots of the decorative trees that are brought in to embellish the scene, so short is their sojourn. But some of these trees have come up to town over and over again, an annual outing. The flowers, of course, come only once for their short moment of triumph. Drink in the colour before the crowds arrive. think we were back at Kew Gardens, where nature herself calls the tune and decides when she'll show herself off. But these flowers have all been coaxed or slowed down in greenhouses and then planted out in their hidden pots. The fact that the ponds are made of fiberglass detracts nothing from their loveliness. Now it's dawn on opening day and all the displays are ready. This is the centerpiece that will live for four days, in fact, and then etch itself into your mind until next year's floral feast eclipses it, as each successive achievement of our ace of spade gardeners always does.